This allows you to paint that area underneath. You don't want to use a foam roller. So sitting here, we've got about 40, 45. As a matter of fact, 95% of those circuit cutter switches installed without consultation are installed incorrectly and there's no benefit. Hi, welcome. Not sure if you are aware, but when a home is constructed and a metal, uh, sorry, a concrete slab is put in, they use metal reinforcement to, uh, to reinforce it. Uh, now that is normally grounded to the electrical system and that can cause some problems. If there's a stray current in the soil, which may not be there now, but could be in there in 30 years, who knows, um, then this metal can become a problem because the metal is connected to the grounding of the house, the grounding is connected to the neutral of the house, and so the um, current can take this alternative path onto the neutral connection of the house, and um, that can cause a lot of magnetic fields in the uh, resident's home. And so when we're building a house and we're going to use concrete, we don't want to use metal reinforcement. Uh, now I'm at this uh, uh, building expo where we're exhibiting with our shielding solutions and assessment and consultation services. And um, I bumped into this company who makes an alternative form of reinforcement for concrete, which is uh, not only stronger for its size, it's easier to work with, it is lighter, it's easier to carry on site, um, all these sorts of wonderful things. So anyway, I'm going to visit with them and ask them to explain some of the details and characteristics of this material for you. Okay, hi everyone, here we are, uh, I've bumped into AJ here, uh, who's going to tell me a little bit more, or tell you a little bit more, about the difference uh, or the benefits of not using metal reinforcement, but an alternative. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, metal reinforcements in concrete can, or can be quite a liability when it comes to stray currents in the soil and, and it you know, links with magnetic fields. So I was very excited to find AJ here um, with uh, an alternative to metal, which is uh, gorgeous. So, uh, AJ, thank you for answering a few questions. Thank you for asking me the questions, Patrick. All right. Um, so, uh, please uh, explain to me the benefits or, or the differences between metal and the use of this material. There are several differences, but the most profound positive for our industry is that this material is made from basalt rock and basalt rock only. That is the only constituent and being basalt rock it's very very impervious to corrosion especially acid or alkaline compared with other products its alkaline resistance is outstanding it also has the advantage that it is between two and a half and three times the strength of steel and it is one quarter of the weight. Okay, so as you mentioned yesterday, just from a logistics perspective, you can just pick a whole roll up yourself, you don't exactly. need three people to move exactly. it? Exactly. For a normal house slab on ground, it would be possible for one man to pick up the product comes in in a mesh form and in a bar form and in a fiber form. In the mesh form, it would be possible for one workman to pick up the mesh in rolls and carry them to work site. One man would carry a normal house slab on ground, the mesh, in his hands. Yeah. The weight, the, the combined fact that the strength is higher and the weight's down, strength for strength, that means the reinforcement will be about one tenth the weight of comparable steel mesh to do the same job. Exactly, perfect. Right. Another one of the advantages is because of its high resistance to corrosion, Concrete cover is now not critical. If, for instance, in some of our projects, the client uses it for a shotcrete application on an excavated face, 
with the steel mesh, it's imperative that the mesh be kept away from the protruding irregular surfaces of the excavation. And in that case, if the irregularities are substantial, you're using substantially more concrete to fill up the irregularities than you would with this product. With this product, it wouldn't matter if some of the mesh was actually touching the ground that might be moist or might be corrosive in some other way. So, apart from the fact that we're strength for strength, we're competitive with steel, we also give a saving in concrete, in reduced cover, and we also give a saving in labour cost of, in some instances, in the tunnels, for instance, where the mesh has got to be put on the ceiling. It's quite awkward to put steel mesh up. It's labour intensive. This, this, is, this product is user friendly. Wonderful. And as you demonstrated yesterday, with a pair of pliers, you can cut it. Yes, yes, it's, it's user friendly in that regard. Again, because it's silica rock, it can, if it was crushed to a powder or if it was cut with a friction saw, the dust will only ever go down, even if you attempt to get it, you will only ever get it down to nine micron. Dust powder has to be below six micron to be an inhalation danger. So this product's not carcinogenic, not aggravation to respiration. We think it's got a good potential, but our problem is that the fibre, for instance, you can put that into your concrete mix, and the fibre is denser than the plastic fibres on the market at the moment, and it's absolutely non-corrodible. Because of its higher density, it likes its its density is comparable to the concrete, so it wants to stay where you put it in the concrete mix. The problem that we've got is because it's a new product and because its strengths are a bit out of what strength and weight is a bit out of what we're normally used to. To thinking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a natural resistance to accept that this mesh here in my hand, for instance, is the equivalent of, of our SL72, which we currently use. And it's understandable that reticence because it's so different. Yeah. That's our job. That's our job to convince people to use it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm certainly excited to found it because, you know, basically with the people that I'm involved with building yeah. houses. We, if there's going to be a concrete slab, we don't want metal in there. Um, well, so this is, uh, you know, a wonderful alternative that. Uh, the strengths and the weights are my area of expertise. What's not my area of expertise is a footprint, and it's ecological. But I'm told by people who who do know these things that this product has a smaller ecological footprint than steel for instance other types of products that are used for reinforcement um, it could be put back into landfill without any harm whatsoever it's basalt rock right. we we don't know yet whether we, we might be able to recycle it we're a bit early in the game okay well um thank you very much for thank uh, you, Patrick. for having me Right. Thank you very much for being interested, Patrick. Thank you.